attacks on Israel bringing a renewed spotlight to the impact of the 2020 Abraham Accords, encountering Iran's influence in the Middle East and beyond. Under the Trump administration, Bahrain, Morocco, and the United Arab Emirates agreed to normalize relations with Israel. While the United States nixed the Obama-era Iran nuclear deal and placed stringent oil sanctions on Tehran, there was much speculation that Saudi Arabia was getting close to joining that Abraham Accord as well. President Biden, of course, reversed all of that, easing sanctions on Iran, enabling Iran to generate billions of dollars in oil sales and access billions more for the regime that backs Hamas and other terrorist proxies in the region. Joining me right now in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is one of the architects of the Abraham Accords, former senior advisor to President Trump, Jared Kushner, who just returned from Saudi Arabia. Jared, thanks very much for being here this morning. Great to be with you, Maria. Before I get to your trip, and I want to hear about your trip to Saudi Arabia, what is your reaction to the attacks on Israel and this spike in anti-Semitism across our country? So the attacks were absolutely horrific, and they're still ongoing. You have a situation where over 200 hostages are being held by the Hamas terrorists. Uh, there's uh, Americans, there's French, there's there's English. So this really is a situation that is very, very tense. Israel's still under rocket fire, uh, and Israel's really conducting a mission right now to try to free those hostages on behalf of the entire world. And so uh, really horrific uh, what we've seen. It's uh, something that uh, was avoidable, but hopefully um, they'll be able to do something now to really eliminate the Hamas threat and go back to uh, trying to be a beacon for peace in the Middle East like Israel's been for, for many years. And of course, this is what you mediated. You mediated the Abraham Accords. Uh, and uh, for the first time in a long time, we were all thinking that we could see peace in the Middle East with those normalized relations with Israel. You're just back from Saudi Arabia. What did you hear from the leadership in terms of potentially joining the pact, joining the Abraham Accords despite this war? Yeah, so it was a very interesting time to be over there, and I've been there many times before. Uh, one of the ironies is that uh, as an American Jew, you're safer in Saudi Arabia right now than you are on a college campus like Columbia University. Um, I spoke at the conference. They allowed me to speak freely. And uh, what I sensed there was that there's obviously a very uh, big uh, disgust at what happened uh, with this uh, tremendous terrorist attack uh, perpetrated by Hamas. Uh, the people of Saudi Arabia have a lot of care for the Palestinian civilians, and so they'd like to see, um, you know, Israel accomplish the mission to, um, to, uh, to, to make sure that the Hamas could be eliminated. They're against terrorism in the region in general, and quite frankly, there's still a lot of enthusiasm to try to continue the, the trajectory that was set under the Trump administration and that uh, the Biden administration has embraced to try and bring Israel and Saudi Arabia together to uh, complete the regional uh, security and economic architecture that will enable a lot of the Jews, Muslims, Christians who live in the Middle East to come together, get to know each other, do business together, and most importantly, have aspirations to live a better life. And, you know, one other thing I'll say that was very inspiring about being there is you think about the tremendous transformation economically that's happened in Saudi Arabia over the last five years, where they've really turned around the country. And you look at the West Bank, you look at Gaza, and you think if only there was proper leadership that cared more about creating opportunity for their people than trying to destroy Israel and per perpetuate anti-Semitism, uh, the possibility could be really tremendous. So do you believe that the Saudi leadership would like to join the Abraham Accords? Yeah, I believe they would like to uh, move forward uh, with the deal with uh, America and with the U and with Israel. Uh, the deal that's being discussed isn't just uh, a partnership with Israel. It's also uh, deepening their ties with America, which is very important. Um, you know, we have to keep in mind that if, if America is not close to Saudi Arabia, then they'll go in the other direction to China. And, uh, and so I think that the, the, the topics being discussed, I'm not um, uh, familiar with all the last details, but it's, it's a really good deal for America, and it seems like it's a very important deal to bring stability in the Middle East. And uh, the person who wants to see it happen the least is really Iran. Uh, they've been in favor of destruction and destabilization before President Trump came into office. Uh, the, the JCPOA, which probably was one of the worst deals uh, ever done in history by the Obama administration, uh, was, was, was flushing Iran with cash, and because of that, 
uh, a lot of the money went to their uh, proxies in Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and we saw a lot of destruction. Over four years, President Trump was able to roll back that money, and that really enabled us to create an environment where we can push for the forces of positivity uh, and peace. And one other uh, thing I'll just mention as well is under the Trump administration, President Trump uh, saw that UNRWA was a corrupt organization and that the money that wasn't being uh, misappropriated was actually going to uh, fund Hamas's organization. Uh, we just saw an interrogation of one of these terrors, terrorists that were captured that confirmed uh, what we've been saying for many years, which is that Hamas has their headquarters in these different hospitals and under these schools. And uh, quite frankly, it's just a situation that could be avoidable. And if he, people learn from the mistakes of the past and they do something different, then there is a lot of hope that uh, the future can be much brighter. So what do you think the prospects are for your father-in-law in 2024 then, President Trump? I see every day, you know, people, uh, even people who are not in favor of Trump are realizing that under President Trump, uh, we had a peaceful world. Uh, people said when he got into power, he would create World War III. Well, uh, there were no new wars. Um, he was making peace deals. The Middle East, which was one of the thorniest issues uh, for American diplomats and politicians and military for two decades, became a very peaceful place with a lot of momentum. And uh, in just a couple short years, uh, you've seen what happened when there's passive leadership and, and weak leadership uh, from America and the world. And, you know, we have uh, two massive wars that have the chance to metastasize further. And quite frankly, the lack of um, the lack of relationships uh, that we have with with countries right now where we're uh, doing strong diplomacy uh, keeps these um, keeps these conflicts in a place where they can get much worse. So I think people uh, recognize that the economy was great under President Trump. The policies he put in place were tremendous. We're seeing what's happening now at the southern border, which, quite frankly, is very scary. You think about what a couple of terrorists can do in Israel. Mm. Imagine what happens when 10 million people come into our country who are unaccounted for. And I think a lot of people who may be um, uh, were against Trump are realizing that we need a strong leader for America and for the world and that his policies made the world a safer and more prosperous place. I mean, you know, it's just extraordinary to me that so much of this just goes back to bad policy. I mean, you oversaw the policy in terms of the Abraham Accords. You just mentioned the ability for the Iranians to be generating all of these billions in money because of bad policy uh, that lessened the sanctions. Tell me about that and how things have changed so dramatically in just a two and a half year period. So when President Trump came into office, um, Iran was selling about 2.6 million barrels a day of oil. Uh, it was a very intense effort led by President Trump. Uh, his uh, special envoy, Brian Hook, was spent every day trying to take apart the Iranian economy. Uh, by the time President Trump left, Iran was out of foreign currency reserves. Uh, they had massive inflation. They were basically broke. Um, and they were selling about 100,000 barrels a day. Uh, the Biden administration came in, I think, because of probably the environmental policies they put in place. Oil prices started rising. Uh, and one of the ways that they tried to uh, uh, either buy stability in the Middle East um, or, or just try to counter the rising prices was they stopped enforcing the sanctions on Iran. Uh, between uh, the start of the administration and now, Iran's taken in almost $100 billion in, uh, in oil sales, and that's led to the funding of a lot of these groups. And so it's very simple. You know, President Trump came in, and, and the way he viewed the Middle East was that if we can contain Iran and we can contain the resources they have to cause trouble, we'll be able to create an environment where peace and, and prosperity is possible. Um, you know, I guess the, the, the Biden administration came in, they allowed Iran to, to get back on its feet. And yeah. what you're seeing now is just the result of that, that bad policy. So, so hopefully they'll learn points. from this. And if yep. they start enforcing those uh, sanctions, I think that we can bring things back in a good direction. So many important points from you, Jared. Thank you very much for being here. Jared Kushner joining us. Thank you, Maria. Great to be President with you. President Trump's son-in-law and the architect of the Abraham Accords. We'll be right back.